In this lesson, we're going to take a look at multiple files. Up to this point, you've been doing your entire program in one file. You've had the main function, preprocessor directives, prototypes, constants, and below main function definitions. Well, now we're going to split everything off into separate files. You're going to have the header file with prototype information, that is declarations of functions, constants, global constants, struct and class definitions, which we haven't yet gotten to, and templated code. Or the main file, you have your driver function. Third file, the accompanying uh, function implementation file, the definitions of the functions that you've prototyped in the header. We have the one file model where you have everything. The system includes the main driver function, your prototypes, and function definitions. That's what you've seen so far. And then there is the modular model where you have multiple files, the main driver file, header files, and your function definition or implementation source files. Those contain the definitions of your auxiliary functions. Here we start with main CPP. You've got preprocessor commands. You're using namespace standard. You have a prototype main the definition of the function greeting. Now this is a ridiculous program. Of course it has one function and all it does is output a message to the user and that's it. But it demonstrates what we're talking about. We're going to create greet.h. You'll notice that there are special lines of code. They are pound if and def uh, greet underscore h, pound define, and end if. These are preprocessor commands. What they do is tell the preprocessor do not define the material in this header file more than once. So the way it reads is, if not defined, then define. And the end if will delimit what it is that you're talking about. This prevents multiple definitions of whatever's contained in this file. This is only done with a header file. The convention in the identifier used is the name of the file in uppercase. You could actually put anything there you wanted, but the convention is all uppercase for the name of the file. Okay, we're going to move over there, the prototype for the program. Then, we've got a separate file called greet.h. Secondly, we're going to create greet.cpp. This is called the implementation file, and this is where we're going to put the definition of the function greetings. That's been prototyped in the header. Now you'll notice new includes. You see it here and here. Okay, if you have three separate files, they're going to get compiled. The compiler needs to know where this information is. Again, when this goes to the compiler, uh, as I stated before, the compiler, actually preprocessor, will remove that line. It takes pound include IO stream, throws it out, puts in its place the code that's in the IO stream library. The same thing is true for a user include, and you'll notice that the difference is the double quotes, not the angle brackets. This is for a file that exists in the current directory. So greet.h has to be in the same directory. The preprocessor will strip out that line of code and take the code from greet.h and insert it into the program there. This way the compiler knows of the declaration of that function that you're using. Why do you pound include greet.h here in the implementation file. Well again, when the compiler gets to that file, it sees the definition of a function and doesn't know that it's actually been declared. Furthermore, if you have more than one function and one function uses another, then including the header file releases you from the necessity of ordering the definitions of the functions in a special order. So one follows the other in the correct order. Pound include the header into the CPP main and into the CPP auxiliary file. Okay, let's take a look at each one of these. The main file, comment header, system and user includes, using namespace standard, and of course it will have your main function. The implementation file will of course have your comment header so you know what it refers to. <clears throat> it have the user include, so that includes the header file, but it doesn't hurt to include the system files, since you're using cout, 
pound include IO stream. If you're using C out, you have to have IO stream. Well, let's go back and take a look at the header. In the header file, you have IO stream here. Now, when you include that into another file, then that IO stream will carry over into greet.cpp. I'm using C out, but I've included greet.h, which has IO stream in it. Now, you might be asking, what about multiple definitions of material in IO stream? Well, again, the preprocessor commands prevent multiple definitions. Those three lines, they will be in the IO stream and all system files also. So that prevents multiple definitions. When you have your code for the function greetings, let's go to greet.h. Again, you have the comment header. The preprocessor directives, that is what prevents multiple definitions of what's contained in that header. You have the system include, you have using namespace standard, you should include that in every file. And of course the prototype for uh, the greet function. And again, what goes in a header file? Prototypes, global constants, I don't have any in this particular program, templated code, so if you have template functions, that's where they go. And struct and class definitions. We haven't gotten to those constructs yet, but these are the things that go into a header file. Okay, what doesn't go? The one thing you don't ever want to do, never ever include a CPP file. You do not include a CPP into your main. You don't include main into anything. It's something you never, ever, ever want to do. Let's go back to the beginning where we have our picture of all the files here. This is good. Including this this way? No, never. Including this this way? No. Never pound include a CPP file anywhere. You don't include main into anything. You only pound include .h files. So how do you compile? The compiling command that you used for a single file was prog.cpp. So what if you have more than one file? All you need to do is list the CPP files to be compiled. You do not list the .h files. Remember that they are taken care of by the preprocessor. They've been included into the CPPs appropriately. You do not have to list them in the compiler command. And if you want to save yourself some time, if you have put your files in their own directory, then you can use a wildcard. The star.cpp will pick up every CPP file in that current directory. That's what will go into your compiling. Again, the motivation for doing this, number one, security. Every CPP file is compiled. If I hire you to write this greet project, you create a greet.h, a greet main, and a greet CPP for the auxiliary function. You compile it and hand it to me. I have to pay you. If I don't like how it works and I want it expanded, I cannot access the CPP files. I can see everything in the header. I can see how the functions are declared, and hence how to use them. But I cannot see the code that actually implements that function or the main. It looks like this. If I want something modified, I have to go back to the vendor to have you modify your code. Portability. You can put special functionality into its header and CPP file pair, and then you can carry it from project to project. Uh, versatility. Of course, you can make your program more versatile by allowing you to add material into it very easily and extendability. You can change your program by extending it for other uses and using pieces of your current program uh, project in others. And so that's how you split up a programming project into multiple files. Be sure you understand how this is done.